The best way to eat this is the way they do it. Slurp, slurp, slurp. So you slurp never, up. you shouldn't cut. Yeah. It's like going to Italy and putting like ketchup in your pasta. You don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in Gyeongju, South Korea, a UNESCO World Heritage Area located about a one hour drive north from Busan. And this was part of the Shila Kingdom that dated back between 57 BC up to the 10th century. Basically, this area is made up of lots of tombs, over 150 tombs, and we're gonna see one of them. And then once we're done, we're gonna go eat a delicious Chinese Korean dinner. Are you guys ready? Let's go inside. Yo, Sam. Hey, man. You enjoying this place or what? Enjoying it so much. There's some nice shade here. It's very historical. All of the buildings have retained their traditional architecture because it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And yeah, it's just great to stroll around. I can't wait to see some of the bigger tombs that are going to be coming up. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is walking through like a park. Yeah. Lots of trees. It's a very nice path. And over here, outside the walls, you can see a little bit of a town, right? It's a small town. Yeah. Not that big. Uh, there's also a second UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, like a Buddhist temple. We're not going to visit that today, unfortunately. But just so you know, there's two UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Gyeongju. Gyeongju. And as you can see, these are the royal tombs. Massive mounds covered in grass. And you were saying there's one or two people? Yeah, basically they're burial grounds for one or two people, obviously within the royal families dating back then. And so, it was, yeah, it was either a, a very famous royal person or a royal couple. One thing she was telling us is that you know, I don't know, when the 60s or 70s, they opened one of the tombs and they couldn't believe it. They found a massive treasure and they moved all that treasure into the National Museum in the area. Wow, that's amazing. So it's pretty amazing. And here we are, the only tomb we can enter. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Woo! Okay, so here we have the tomb, as you can see. Right there is where the guy was. Obviously, they removed him. They left all his, like, treasures, the crown, the bell. Uh, you also have, where else? Pottery, but I mean, a lot of gold in there, a lot of silver, and it's really unique how the tomb was, because obviously this is new, what they built here, but this is how it originally was, and it always had like a box covering it, always surrounding it, but it was in all this stone. And I don't really know the date that this dates back to, but over a thousand years for sure, because the tombs were between 57 BC and one in the 10th century. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's I mean, a long the, time ago. Yeah, and the crown is amazing. Yeah, it was one of the three kingdoms at the time. And it ended up being the one, the dominant one and reunified the whole country, basically. This part of the exhibit has all the gold pieces that would go around the horse. Right here, what do we have? So this is uh, stirrups. I don't know what that is. This is the bit. This is the part that would go right here by the mouth of the horse. This is another bit. This is a saddle. Really cool. The saddle, completely gold. And we have some more stuff. And this is the harness pendant. Wow, the harness is really, really nice. I mean, this is just shows how much power they had. You know, they had a lot of money, a lot of influence. Wow. I mean, to have this on a horse, obviously this guy was the king, right? So one of these is a replica. I don't know if this one or the one in a tomb, but this is basically what the king would wear. The crown, necklace, you know, uh, belt, rings. His shoes are even gold. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. All right, guys, we saw it. We saw the royal tomb. This is just one of 150 just like this. Lots of treasure. They haven't opened all the rest up. They really just want to leave it alone and let it stay preserved as it is. So fun fact about Kyungju, there are over 150 tombs here, but they only know the identity of 57 of those. That means there's over 100 tombs that they're still trying to figure out the identity of who was actually buried there and what the significance is. The next spot we're visiting here is called the Observatory. It was built in 647, and it's a stone tower. It doesn't really look like a huge observatory. I mean, it, it, was, it was the tallest thing, or the tallest structure at the time. As you can see, it's like, I don't know, what is it, 30 feet high, 40 feet high. Very small structure, but very old, you know. Seventh century, so you're talking about over 1400 years. I found it quite impressive. I mean, the thing that I liked the most actually was the walk up to here. Really nice open spaces. I guess if you continue onward, you, you go into a forest. We won't have time to go explore that, but uh, this thing was interesting enough though. That was basically like a, a little bit of a watchtower, right? So yeah. observatory, the guy would get on top, he would look over the entire area, and he could see until a mountain, so he could see if any yeah. invaders were coming. 
right? I mean, this is be, this is before tall buildings existed, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because <laughs> it's it's shorter than a lot of the trees. So. Yeah, and I mean, you do have the mountains in the background, but it is very flat. So I just learned that the observation deck may have also been used as like for astronomy purposes, also to predict weather, because back then it was very much an agricultural society and rains for the farmers would have been very important for crops. And now we're going to eat some Korean Chinese dinner. And here we go, Korean Chinese. Yeah, we are going to second floor. Second floor, let's do it. Sherry, I show you the table. Dude, I'm so excited to be here. This place looks really fancy, really nice. We actually have a private dining hall, two separate tables. So excited to have Chinese Korean food. Okay guys, so we're starting off with Dong Su Yuk, which is deep fried pork with sweet and sour sauce. Oh my God, it looks so amazing. It looks like sweet and sour chicken in a way, but with a different type of coloring. You know, it's not like red. Oh, I cannot wait to eat this. I am hungry. So bad. Mm. Dude, this is amazing. It's good, huh? I've never tried this before. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's very unique to Korea. I've never tried a deep fried pork with this type of sauce. Yeah. See, the closest thing to this is, like I said, sweet and sour chicken. Yeah. Mm. Very chewy, very yummy. Mm. Deep fried, but yeah. it's not too deep fried. No. You know? Just enough to give it a bit of crispiness on the outside. Oh, wow. This is a perfect kind of food if you don't care too much about your waistline. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely a fatty food. It actually feels a little like, a little bit like honey. Yeah. A nice glaze. Enjoying that? Mm. It was an ice cold Korean beer. <laughs> ice cold Korean. Oh. It's good pouring, not too much head. No, never too much head. <laughs> I don't need too much head. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow, nice refreshing light beer. Yeah. This is basically like a Bud Light. Yeah. But, do they have aprons? We also have some soju. Oh, we got some soju to power through that light beer. All right, all right, we're gonna have to try this right now. Yeah. Right now. Sorry right now. guys. I'm gonna try a little bit of soju to so let, let you see <laughs> what it's like. Yeah. Just a little bit, not too much. Soju is basically like a, I guess it's like potato, right? I think so. Sweet but potato, yeah. Sweet potato, for me it's sweet potato, but it tastes like vodka. It does have a vodka oh, like, taste to okay. it. Not so Good. strong though, twenty percent. Yeah. To mix it with a little beer, you cut the you cut the cut the taste of it. Yeah, mix yeah. a little beer. Put a beer beer in there. It's a good marriage. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. Whoever wants some soju, here we go. <laughs> Well, you know, classic at Korean Chinese restaurants, in addition to the jajamen that David has, is champon, which is a spicy seafood noodle soup. By the way, if you're wondering why I've got this ridiculous red thing on my shirt, they basically asked if I want an apron or bib so that I don't splash the soup on my yellow shirt. Uh, so this seafood and noodles, these noodles, they were actually much longer, but I've already cut them with scissors, because uh, you get scissors here to cut them. And it's got seafood, things like uh, squid, but let's go in for some of these noodles. Just the right level of soft and chewy. But since it is spicy noodle soup, the spiciness uh, would be right there in the soup. Spicy, great kick. Almost has a little bit of that kimchi type spiciness. Get some champon when you come to Korea. So next up we have jajangmyeon. This is one of the specialty dishes here. So it's basically black bean paste yep. with noodles, pork. It looks extremely greasy. This reminds me of a dish in China. Because in China it's always saucy. Saucy, yeah. saucy, saucy. Like that. Oh wow, it's been like, Look at all the noodles. Oh, that was a bit, there's a lot of noodles there. Oh my god, look and at they're that. they're really long too. So you have to, how do you mix it? Oh, it's like, like just mix it and you kind of just face the sauce over top of it. So this is like the only noodles I've actually had, or the first noodles I'm gonna have in Korea. Yeah, I haven't had any true. noodles yet. Kind of just want to coat them in, in the in the sauce. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> All the noodles in the world, right there in your bowl. So here we go. Look at that. Bam. Bam. Mm. Oh, this is a Chinese dish for sure. Mm. So good and greasy, man. Super greasy. I love how long the noodles are. Look at that. <laughs> mm. It's so greasy, though. It's like so greasy. I love the sauce, man. It's so different. Very rich, no? Yeah, very rich. Like, what is this? Like, this is the kind of meal you get, dude, when you're hungry. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is this is straight up China right now. I was in China last month, so it's taking me back to my old times. Yeah. Good old times. <laughs> Dude, I ate so much noodles in China, I gained like 10 pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm. The best way to eat this is the way they do it. Slurp, slurp, slurp. So you slurp never, up. you shouldn't cut. Yeah. It's like going to Italy and putting like ketchup in your pasta. You don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that's an immediate, uh, like, unfriend. <laughs> I don't mm. trust someone who puts mm. ketchup on their pasta. Mm. So tasty, man. So tasty. So different. I yeah. mean, no spice at all. Like, it's not hot. No. In no way. I think I would add that, you know. You want spice in there? No, I don't know. Maybe some kimchi. No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. No, that would, like, destroy the flavor here. Yeah. And no, it's very greasy. We have, very sticky. We have one more thing to try, dude. We have yeah. the pan-fried... Dumplings. Oh, we have pan fried dumplings. Mandu. Just gonna grab it in my hand. Grab it. Bite it. What do you mm. think? Oh, what's inside? Chicken. Uh, probably might be a little pork. Maybe mm. some noodles even. Oh, but the best thing to do is to dip into the sauce. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. What do you think? Mm. Oh, I love it, dude. It's like a super thick black sauce. I don't know what this is, but it's so good. Yeah. Mmm. Like that. From China, man. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, I've been loving this Korean Chinese meal. Two of my favorite items are the jajangmyeon, these noodles over here. Mm. So tasty, so greasy. Um, I really like the tongsuyuk, the breaded pork in the sweet and sour sauce. Oh yeah. Mm. It's like the perfect marriage between these two dishes. You get the greasiness and then you get something sweet. I love it. I love it. I can't, I can't eat like this. No? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Gambe, 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 gambe. What? A fantastic oh, dinner. Man. That Incredible. was amazing. That was, that was so delicious. That was so different from the rest of the things we've eaten. Whoa, that guy almost hit us. <laughs> you know what? That was, a, that was a grease fest for the ages. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. It, I was, loved it was a lot. I like it. We've been eating really healthy, so it's okay to have a meal like that. And it's going to flush it down with some beer, some down. soju. Yeah. And now what we're doing is we're taking the KTX, so the Korean Express train, bullet train, all the way back to Seoul. Yeah. It's going to take us around two hours. Let's go to the train Let's station. After a 20 minute ride from the Chinese Korean restaurant, we are here at Sungjong. Xinjiangyu. Xinjiangyu station. Yeah. And we're taking the bullet train straight back to Seoul, two hours and two hours. 10 minutes. Oh man, luckily we have a train station here because I thought we had to go back to Busan and then catch the train station here from there. I know, that that's what been. I was thinking too. I'm like, we have a backtrack? No, that would've no, been forever. That would've been awful. <laughs> but yeah guys, we're gonna go into the station now. I think we have 45 minutes before the train leaves and I think yeah. we're going in first class again. This train station is pretty small, as you can see. Obviously, it only goes to Busan and to Seoul and they leave every, every 20 minutes of the train. So it's either to Busan, there's like three an hour, to Seoul is two an hour, so I mean there's a lot of trains to choose from. What I recommend is that you buy your train ticket early. If you try to go on the weekends, it's impossible. So I suggest you really try to book your ticket in advance because if not, you won't get a ticket. We were just booking our tickets for the next time we go, which is Saturday morning. And we had to get to 6 a.m. because they didn't have anything till 2 p.m. that later that day. And now we're going up to the tracks and we're getting on the train. I'm excited. I love the bullet train. Sam, ready? I'm totally ready, man. Let's do this. Back to Seoul. First class bullet train. Love this thing. Where we're sitting. Dude, ready to go back to Seoul? Yes, sir. All right, so we just boarded the train, and what they gave us was a little bag. And in this bag is like peanuts, cookies. <laughs> what is that? Let me see. We got nuts. nuts. <laughs> So yeah, this is a two hour and 15 minute ride, similar to Busan, a little less, right? Like two hours. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a night train, so you can't see anything, but yeah, it goes really fast. Two hours is the fastest way, and first class is like something like $80 uh, per person one way. So it's not affordable, but it's pretty affordable compared to Japan. So we've been on the train for about an hour, and I'm gonna tell you a few things that I love about this train. Okay, number one, free Wi-Fi. Number two, free water, okay? So they have a vending machine over there, it's worth the book, and it gives you water. There's also TVs on the top, and you can charge your phone right here. You can charge your laptop, your batteries, whatever you want. On top of that, 
listen to this, I put my phone right in front of me. So I'm just like watching YouTube, hearing music, and doing some work. And we should be there within the next like 50 minutes. Oh, I'm very tired. It's been a super long day. It's, um, what is it? It's 9.30 at night. Yeah, I can't wait to get back to Seoul. What an amazing day. Where did we go? What was what the name of the city? What a day. We went to Gyeongju. Gwang Gyeongju. So we went Gyeongju, yeah. UNESCO World Heritage Site. We saw royal tombs. We went into one of them. There's over 150. After that, we ate such a freaking amazing meal. Oh. Korean Chinese food. Didn't even know that existed. It's insanely good. The, what's the name of the noodles again? Jajangmyeon. Jajangmyeon. Oh. Oh my god. I pulled them in the air. I flipped them. <laughs> <laughs> I ate some crazy thing with my tongue. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> it was really, really yeah, nice. The, the, the tongue siuk, the sweet and sour pork. Oh man, that was killer too. That was so good. I mean, so good. Yeah, so what, what an epic day. And then we took the bullet train. Fastest way to get around South Korea. Yeah. Uh, you know, 190 miles per hour. And yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. It was an extremely long day. But yeah, we're back in Seoul. Yeah. And uh, give us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Comment below. Hello. Subscribe to my channel, this channel. And we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Ciao. <laughs>